Hey, hey, my friends. I am so glad that you're tuning in today. You're listening to the Online Income for Therapists podcast, where we help you learn how to live with more freedom, flexibility, and flow. And we do this by helping you to take your passions and your hard earned skills and turn them into businesses that live online. Whether it is building an online therapy practice or creating online courses or memberships, we got you. We cover it all here. All the ways that you can create more impact and make more income. Because we're all about service here, but service without the sacrifice. Today we have a really special guest. Shayla Peterson graduated from Step by Step And before she even graduated, she began bringing clients into her online therapy practice. I can't wait for you to hear all of the tips, tricks, and tools she shares in this podcast to help you build your own online therapy practice. So pop in those earbuds and listen in. Hey! How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Good. It's so good to see you. You too. <laughs> I get to see the videos on the online, you know, <laughs> on Facebook, but this reminds it's me not. of the a little bit. I yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're already recording, but we're not live. So I'm just going to record this and then later I'll upload it to the podcast in the group. Very cash and my goal is really for all of the step grads to be able to give tips and tricks to the OTGers about how to build their practice and then to share about the course and what was helpful, all that kind of stuff. So they know if they want to take it. That's the basic overview. You got to first tell me like, how are you doing and where's your practice at right now? Um, doing well, of course, busy, um, but that's to be expected. <laughs> um, and so where the practice is at, I have um, five regular clients, five weekly clients. Um, and as you know, I started towards the end of the group um, yeah. in terms of um, pretty much, I guess, launching my private practice. <laughs> yeah. And for people who are listening in, Shayla was in the June, July yeah, June, July, eight weeks. Mm-hmm. June, July. Yeah, the June, July. So the this most recent one. Yes, the third cohort. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, but I know that in my mind that the class was eight weeks or the course was eight weeks. So I was going to open the private practice in August. Like, got you, got second you. Second week of August was my goal. It was, um, I knew my birthday was coming. I was like, oh, I'm going to do the, like you suggested uh, <laughs> about like sharing with your friends what you were doing. So it was really just like this intro to like, this is this new phase in life. This is what I'm doing. Oh. And um, because I was doing the work, you know, coming to the coaching classes every week when you would share the content, I would do it then. I mean, I was up late, um, but I knew that this was something that I wanted to do. So it's no different as if we're in college or we're taking a CEU when we're doing that work. And some may apply and some may not. But if you go ahead and do that, it's that step by step. So then when you get to week eight or week six, you really have done all of those things and it preps you for the practice. Yes, yes. And it's so hard to, I've taken a lot of online courses and I know I'm super gun ho in the beginning. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing my work. And then about midway through, I'm like, ah, I'm going to just listen, but I'm not actually going to do the work. How did you stay motivated to keep putting in the time week after week? One, I mean, and I said it before too, it's the coaching call. So that once a week, like I put that on my schedule. I didn't, you know, put any clients during that time. I wasn't out in the field. So I knew Monday at 9 a.m., have my coffee ready and be ready to, you know, um, connect with your peers and also to hear your feedback. Because I think I learned a lot by hearing other people questions. Yeah. And then also coming with my own questions and update. So it was just like, oh, there's some accountability here. Not that anybody was checking for you, but it was more like, okay, I know I asked this question last week. I need to do that work so I can come back and share with my peers what has happened, what worked or what didn't work. So those coaching calls Mm -hmm. is what kept me on track. I think if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have done anything. It just would have been the money down the drain. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That, that's what we're finding with online courses, that if you don't have that live component, people just don't get it done. And I get that because I bought those classes. So <laughs> I've, I've seen that money go down the drain. I always tell myself, well, you have lifetime access though. So one day you could change your mind and do the work. 
I'm not going to do the work. No, life happens. You, you don't go back to it. But if you do it right then and there, and it is that life component, I think that was very helpful. Uh, so how did you get your five peeps? How did that happen? Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I think I talk about it a lot is I had the Instagram, which also feeds into the Facebook. Not that any of those matter, but I think that just kind of kept up with the content and me getting comfortable with putting myself out there. Um, I've utilized, although I did get a client via Instagram. What? <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> I guess she's on there. Who, well, however, I didn't say like, what were you looking for? She just said, or that person uh, said they were looking for, um, they found me on Instagram. And so I was just like, oh, okay. You know, I didn't really think anything of it, but I do have content. Everything I post, I do have three ways to connect with me, which would be, you know, of course, my website, my email and direct phone number, which is that 888 number. So, I mean, any post that I have, they can connect to it. So if it resonates with them, hey, give me a call. Um, don't DM me or whatever they call it because I'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> But definitely that. But Psychology Today, of course, which is the go-to. Um, and so I do get clients from there. That would be the bulk. Mm -hmm. It's psychology today. And then the second one is therapy for black girls. Um, there's definitely a need for um, African American women and men who are looking for clinicians who look like themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so that has definitely been a plus. That would be the other one where I get um, clients from. I've also signed up with Open Path. Um, not yet. Um, and then who else? Hmm. Do you have an online counseling directory? No, I do not. I need to get that one started. I, I saw you talk about that one. Mm -hmm. So online count. Look, I'm taking those too. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing some coaching right now. I guess that would be, oh, and therapy den. I therapy den. Yes. 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 So Simple. what's your niche? So for people who are like, all right, we keep hearing about the niche. What's your niche? Okay. So my niche is professional women or students balancing work, life, um, motherhood, being a partner, all of those things in one. I think what we've learned is we've gotten this whole mentality of like, I want to do it all, you know? Um, and then even this whole thing, is, is there a such thing as balance? And I'm not saying yes, there is, but what I'm saying is some things are going to require a little bit more than others. Um, we might spend more time on our career. We might spend a little bit time with our family, but if we have some tools, some techniques, and if our mental wellness is in place, we can do that. And so those are the people that I have seen to be attracting. Um, and those are the people that I want to work with. And mm -hmm. I want to say that it's really clearly stated in, I guess, the copy um, mm -hmm. on my website, because that's literally what I hear. They're like, oh, you were speaking to me when you said I was um, feeling overwhelmed. You know, like there's just so many things to do and it's not enough hours in a day. And my brain is just frazzled. How do I get some skills? How do I get those tools? How do I do this? Because Girl. I can't operating like this you're the best copywriter i'm telling you <laughs> i mean y'all pause the video or the podcast however you're listening to this and just go back and listen to those words because if you can when we talk about niche i think we get lost on like symptoms or but it's about the struggle like what is the struggle our person is facing and their struggle is super unique and when i read shayla's copy even if her niche isn't me I relate so much to it because of the way she describes it. It's like reading a novel. I'm like, yes, I so empathize with that. Like balance, what is balance? It, it's, it's just writing to the emotion, to the struggle. And then your peeps, I mean, that is a beautiful elevator pitch that you gave right there. And I doubt that you've ever been like, let me write down my elevator pitch. No. <laughs> that was it. If you can talk like that, people will refer to you. If you're talking to a physician or a chiropractor or whomever and you can say these are the people I help and you're defining very specific struggles it's gonna hit places in their heads where they're like oh I know so and so that's exactly what they're going through Let, do you treat people like that and then you have a referral there it is Bam. your copy is <laughs> badass how did you learn to do that well what I've learned is I go, there's, there's two different, I don't know, two different types of therapists. There's the one they'll throw out all those symptoms stuff, you know, like they'll go and run down the whole gamut of what depression is and anxiety is and everything else. And I go, yeah, the folks I talk to, they'll know what any of that is. Yes. Right. And so one specific example, and I use this a lot and I go growing up, we'll hear people say, oh, my nerves are bad. 
And I remember growing up saying like, yeah, my nerves are bad. You'll hear people say, and I go, you know what? That's anxiety. There's right. no such thing as your nerves are bad. You're <laughs> keyed up. And so I really have taken that. And that was just something I learned years ago. I have taken that and I use that language in the therapy room, in our space. When I'm talking to people, I go, yeah, those are just terms that our family used, right? They didn't mm -hmm. say they were depressed. Ooh, I just don't feel like doing anything today. I haven't been feeling like doing anything for the last couple of weeks, ever since, and they'll go into whatever story has happened. So I'm getting on their language level, and then we'll do education on that. But if I'm sitting here running through the list of what depression is, I'm sorry, that's just not going to work. Right. That's not how I'm going to pull them in, and that's not going to allow them to feel comfortable in this space. Yep. Yep. I remember in grad school, you know, I had been learning all the psychobabble. I was in psychodynamic theory and I was deep in it. Like I was loving it. And then I did my first sessions and I knew what the client was struggling with in psychobabble language, but I, I didn't know how to translate it because that's how I learned it. I was like, oh, but he's not going to care about being a narcissistic appendage for his mother. Like, yes, <laughs> I don't know how right? to say this. You know? So it is interesting if you just use the language of your people, like your clients, I, I could speak to him, but I was having to kind of like translate it through all the psycho jargon that I had been learning and was so excited to put into practice. And you just intuited that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your videos, you guys, if you're listening in, you want to check out Shayla's videos because they are badass. They're just exactly right because they speak to her clients. Like, they're just normal people language. They're, they're the way that we talk. Mm -hmm. And that's why people come to see you because they're like, oh, okay, so she's going to get me. I love it. Yeah. Where were you before you started the online therapy practice journey and where are you hoping to get? Okay. So um, before I started online practice, I also, I still work <laughs> full time too. So I am a clinical consultant Oof. for um, a organization here working with seniors only um, and so I'll go out to the communities and provide mental health services and also kind of manage some of our other clinicians that we have as well so very pretty busy but about two three days a week so then that allows the other two days for my practice and you know paperwork and mm -hmm. you know money stuff all that other good thing so that's what I was doing um, before now, my hopes with the practice is that it will continue to grow. I only had a number of six for the end of the year. That was my goal. Um, I'm one client away from that, but we know things can change. Um, but it's to do this, have about 15 clients. Mm -hmm. um, full, that would be full time for me, 15, maybe 20, somewhere in between there. Because I know that um, I'm also a military spouse. We're going to move again. And so my mission is that when we transfer over that, this practice will be able to transfer right along with me and I'll be able to continue to be um, of service and be able to serve um, the population that I want to help. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. What rate is your rate? Because uh, everybody's going to want to know numbers, but of you can course. tell me if you don't want to share. No, I'm ready to share because <laughs> you and I've done a lot of money mindset with that because you remember my original rate and I'll share that too. It's like, oh yeah, I got to charge a hundred dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, Shayla, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no one's going to pay that. You're like, no, you come with 16 plus years experience. You have this. And I, I thank you for that, for kind of planting those seeds and encouraging me and changing my mindset around money. Um, but I charge 150 for the assessment, which is those 75 to 90 minute sessions where we're gathering all that information. And then I charge uh, 135 for our 45, 50 minute session. So the hopes, of course, by the end of the year, we're going to boost that up. Yes, uh, ma'am. <laughs> because I know what I'm doing now a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So it'll turn into, of course, 150 for the session and then 165 for an assessment. I love it. And I love how clearly you plan things out, that you set benchmarks for yourself. You know, you really, you really think it through. So this idea of I'm going to have six clients before the end of the year. And I, I love how Laura Long often says, like, let's set goals that you actually have control over. So since we can't control the sixth client, what can you control to generate more business? What can you be doing to make sure that that sixth client's going to come in before the end of the year? 
Uh, increased marking, definitely that I would say that. So um, I know I see a lot of um, our, our peers, the group are doing YouTube pages. I know that would be very beneficial. I usually do 60 minute little video or 60 second videos, mm -hmm. doing something longer, giving more in depth, explaining uh, more of what I do and more about mental health and mental wellness for women. Um, so I know that would be one um, to blogging more often <laughs> mm -hmm. because you do see the difference. I do notice when I am blogging regularly, I'm posting regularly and doing little things. When we talk about that SEO, I don't know specifically how it all works, but I do know I get more calls during that time. So yeah. something's happening. Yep. So I Absolutely. might not be able to do the math on it, but something's going on. So really putting yourself out there, uh, joining groups, going to mastermind groups, networking with other people, talking about your practice whenever you get a chance, which I do. Anybody who's going to talk to me, you're going to know that I have an <laughs> online private practice. At this point, I don't care about being bold. So yes, I, I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't care about how being bold. What is, what, how would they know what I'm doing? You know, and that is, I, may be, I might not even be a good fit for them, but they might know someone. Hey, pass my card along. See how that works. Yep. Yep. I just had somebody, Paul and I were at a restaurant. We were sitting at the bar to eat dinner and our, our waitress was fine. She's friendly. At the end of the night, she says like, what do you guys do? And my husband tells her and I tell her and she's like, you're a therapist. And I was like, yeah. And she goes, um, could I get your card? Cause I haven't been in therapy in a while and I need to get back in. I'm like, this is, this is bizarre, but this is how you end up making connections as you just talk about what you do. Every contractor that has come to my house has asked me, what do you do? I say, I'm a psychologist. Oh, what do you specialize in? I tell them, they say, well, I have a cousin or I have a sister or I have a, you know, could you, could you recommend somebody or could you help them? So I think being bold is important. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be comfortable with what we do and who we are. And we also know that being clinicians, there's something on our forehead that says, Hey, I'm here to help. <laughs> Sometimes we wish we can hide it with a hat. But right. it is what it is. And so if that is just be in it and live in it and, you know, help how we can. Yeah. You know what I think would probably be helpful for you just to decrease the amount of work you're having to do. There's a um, app called Teamy, T-E-E-M-I, I think, something like that. Um, but it transcribes whatever, audio or video. So you could just have it transcribe your videos and then you clean it up a little and you could use that in your blog as just content. So just put the transcription up and that way it's just additional content. And if somebody wants to read instead of watch the video, it's right there, but it just tricks SEO monsters into thinking that you've done some extra work. Sounds like a plan. I like that. <laughs> right? we, we, <laughs> we like to trick them. You could also add it as captions in your video. Um, Facebook rewards captions and YouTube rewards captions. So they show videos more often if they are captioned. Okay. I can't help but slide into coaching mode a little of bit. Of course, of course. <laughs> like, I'm taking notes. I know I should, I should just keep that later. You know, and you do it, you do it. So let's talk about the course for a minute. What made you decide to take the course? You're very competent. You could have figured everything out on your own. Why did you choose to take the course? So the funny thing is I watched, you had a video, I don't even know if it's still posted, but you have about a 90 minute video that literally explains step by step almost like of how to, you know, create your on online practice. And I wrote down everything. I have it all in notes and I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is right up my alley. This is a great way for me to make my career even more portable as being mm -hmm. a military spouse and a mom and being more available. And then I was like, yeah, this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> and because I am organized and I am a step-by-step -step person and then I was like okay I'm gonna start working on this and then I saw that you start offering the group that it was you know you do the soft launch and let people and I was like oh there's gonna be a group for this I said oh too easy I'll just go ahead and do the group and that way it's step by step and then I'm learning a little bit at a time opposed to I'm just trying to do all these things Mm -hmm. Now, I would say because I have been in private practice before, like a brick and mortar with a group and because um, the consulting that I do here, a lot of things I already had in place, like MPI number, you know, having insurance. It wasn't like I'm this newbie fresh out of, you know, school trying mm -hmm. to figure this out. And I think that was helpful because I didn't have to spend time on that. Yeah. So when we talk about little tasks 
Um, but that's what made me take the course. It was just like, no, now there's going to be some guidance. If I have a question I can ask and I won't sound like a noose of saying, Hey, Amber, duh, 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 duh. you know, I've invested. So, you know, you're going to feed into us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, yeah. was, um, that was it. So when there's investment and when I think about investments and we talk about your return on your investment, right. I have already made my money back oh, from wow. the course that I took with you. So to me, this is just a plus, you know. So. That's so cool to hear. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. That's that's fun math to do. I usually don't like math, but that's <laughs> that's fun math to do. Like, okay, I've already made my money back on that. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I you know, when you say that because you came in having already done private practice, that that was a leg up for you. I have a lot of people who contact me and say, you know, I've already been doing in-person private practice. Am I really going to get enough out of the course? And my answer is always like, you are going to be relieved because it's a lot to learn how to do a private practice and how to do it online. So the fact that you're always going to have a little bit of this stuff done, I think you're going to be like, cool, then there's a little bit less work for me to do. How, you've gone through it yourself. So what, what's your take on that? Uh, it's definitely a lot less work <laughs> to have an online private practice. Um, when I think about meeting, you know, clients at 9 a.m., I'm not rushing to an office, you know, I've either already dropped off my child and here I am. So I like that. And then the freedom. So when we talk about freedom of having a private practice, when we talk about um, being in like a brick and mortar where you have to show up at the office, we talk about that being freedom, but Mm -hmm. not really, because you have to go be at an office somewhere and you have to stay there. And I don't know if you have it set up like a home, but if you needed a nap or you needed to do something and that's not at your place, you have to leave there. Mm -hmm. When you're at home, everything is there. You can throw some dishes in real quick. (laughs) Um, All those things. So, I mean, the real flexibility, this is it, you know? Um, So I, I don't know. I think, did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah, you did. And you're making me think like today is my um, wedding anniversary. And so I have, (laughs) thank you. I have you guys in the morning and then I have two clients in the afternoon, but the place we're going is only two hours away and they have Wi-Fi. So we're going to drive in between and then I'm going to set my little office up there, do my two sessions and then I'm free and clear. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. It is so, so nice. So let's do a little advice giving. So for newbies who are thinking about taking the course or even who aren't, who are just going to set this up on their own, what would be some pieces of advice that you would have for them to really get going and to be successful in having an online therapy practice? Uh, Really to make sure one is that they, when they're signing up or thinking about signing up, that they could um, find time for those coaching calls. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to really be key. I don't care if you're good at reading and carrying out tasks. I think the coaching calls, that peer mentorship, um, you getting it by, I mean, you giving out the advice and them taking it or suggestions, that's going to be key. Um, two, checking with your board, already thinking about that, you know, what state that you're in, you know, making sure um, that, you know, this is something that your board is okay with. You know, Mm -hmm. I know we're moving towards it. A lot of them are, but just making sure that they're okay with that. Um, Did I write down a note for that one? Oh, you're so on top of it. You had notes and everything? I did. Well, because I knew you were going to ask about money and I wanted to make sure I gave them real numbers because I see in the group people ask about that, you know, and they go, well, is it gross or net and all this? I was like, well, I'm not a play gross or net. I know I have an S corp and money goes into an account and I pay myself. (laughs) But what I do know is I can tell you things have doubled from the first month when we talk about was that July. I wasn't even supposed to open in July. Opened in July. Things have doubled in August. We'll see what September is like. People cancel, reschedule, whatever. I'm just hopeful if I can continue to be of service at this point, that's where it is. I know it'll probably have to get tightened up later as things go on, Mm -hmm. but that's where we are. Well, let's um, back up. Let's put the the (laughs) tips and tricks aside for a minute. Let's talk money. Walk us through the numbers. Okay. So in July, I had made $600. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for August, which was last month, I made 1500. Damn girl. <laughs> yeah. And then, so for September already, we're at 700, but we still have about another week and a half and we're actually at the beginning. So really kind of like two weeks. So that. That's you weren't even supposed to be seeing clients yet. <laughs> I know. I really wasn't. So that's why I'm telling you, like do the work, attend the coaching calls. 
Um, one drawback I would say for me once I was doing it. So you, you share forms, right? You get them when you're part of the group. I literally had like a friend create my forms for me, all pretty with my logo, like, and, you know, thanks Amber for this. And then because of the system that I use, you can't just upload those forms. So you literally have to, and I think a lot of us have kind of ran into that, like cutting and pasting, which is fine, but be prepared for that when you're getting your first client. Um, where I wasn't. <laughs> How long did it take you to cut and paste everything in there? Um, I would say if you kind of block off about an hour or two, because you're mm -hmm. literally just making those sections. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know they give you in simple practice, there's like, you can make it a yes or no, a drop down. Um, I'm sure mine's isn't perfect, but it's just, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> and so they can click it. And when I see that form, it looks right. I know that they've answered the questions and we can proceed with our session. So that's another thing too. Like once they do start seeing client, making sure that those things are in place because it's going to reduce your anxiety that all those forms are done. You know, mm -hmm. um, for me using that system, I can't speak for, you know, eye therapy or Theranets, but I know with simple practice, you know, their card is already on file. So, you know, once they put their card in that they're really serious about their appointment. Mm -hmm. So I remember having like one of my first clients and they didn't have their card in, but I still made myself available. They didn't show. So I know now if there's not a card in, we're not meeting. I'm not even <laughs> showing up on the system. And, you know, you can send out reminders to them to invite them back to the portal for them to fill out everything that they need to fill out. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. uh, little tips, but that would be further along in the course for them. But doing the work um, attending the coaching, connecting with other clinicians. So this is such a great time for networking mm. and meeting. And, um, so I'd start doing those virtual coffees in my mind. I read this somewhere. I don't know. I cannot find this information anywhere else. Maybe I made it up. <laughs> Maybe. So I have met some cool people. I mean, you know, Julia, of course, you know, she and I connect. We have a meeting later on today. <laughs> um, and Julia so is somebody else who is in the course, you guys. <laughs> yes. And then there's Ashley. And so um, Kathy, so all these other different people that I've made connections with, and we're helping each other out, you know, like, oh, well, how did you do this? And so now the course is over and we're still talking. We're still connected. Well, what did you do? Well, how did you do this? oh, I see how you posted these things. Maybe I should try that. Please, by all means, if it works, use it. So it's such a great support system that you get afterwards. And that's just going to be up to, you know, them and your personality and how you want to do it. But I think it's great because if they're licensed somewhere else and you get a call, you can say, hey, you know what? I might not be a good fit for you, but I have a friend that's over in New York, a good therapist friend. She'll take care of you, you know, or I have one in New Orleans. I have somebody in Florida whatever it is. So I think it's a great time to start a network also while you're building. So you don't feel alone because we don't talk about how private practice can feel lonely. No right. joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I just, on one of the podcasts I was recording yesterday, I was talking about the things that you need for an online private practice. And the very first one is community to me because we haven't been doing this long enough. Most of us to have thought through all the things that we don't know. We just don't know them. Yeah. And so then you run up against something funky and you're like, oh crap, I don't know. I, I don't know how to sort this out. If you ask a brick and mortar practice owner, they're not going to be able to give you useful advice. You need to go to people who are also doing this weird thing that you're doing so that they understand all the mechanics and the nuance of it. And you guys are building that peer support right now, right? Right within step-by-step, step, which I love. It makes me so happy. You're the second cohort to do this where you've created your little group and you've continued meeting after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Such a great support. Yeah. yeah. Even getting on there now and, you know, people posting what they're doing and just us cheering them on like, oh, this is awesome and really supporting each other. So I definitely appreciate that. It's been really encouraging just to encourage others and also to get the feedback as well. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And that's one of the things that I think is unique to the step-by-step -step group. A, it's so much smaller than OTG. But the fact that during the course and even after, you can post stuff like your copy or your Psychology Today profile or your website and get feedback from people who have been through the course so they know what's important and they, you know, they know what mindset stuff to look for. Yeah. And you're getting feedback from people who are in the know, who are learning the same things that you are instead of like, you know when you post something the OTG 
nobody's really going to look at it very carefully, but these are your friends. So they're like, oh yeah, no girl, that third line needs to come out. Bring that out. That's not good. Exactly. Yeah. They're going to give you the real, cause the, the bond has been formed, you know, yeah. we've met. So it's a little different where in OTG there's, um, the people who want to get into it where we went through the course already. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Oh, I just love you guys. <laughs> Any other like tips or tricks that you would offer people who are thinking about building an online practice or maybe who are kind of already in it, but are like, how do I fill it? Where are the clients? Um, one, I would say, I think it's definitely my mindset. So it's just like, whoever needs me, they're going to come to me, but then I'm also going to make myself available. Meaning that you're going to see it in the information that I share. I'm going to connect with other people. Um, but as I'm saying this, something else popped into my mind and I lost it just that quick. Oh, Shayla, why did you get a brain fort? <laughs> um, <laughs> which happens often. <laughs> but yes, putting your abundance, you know, of course it's abundance, like they're going to come to me and that this is going to continue to grow. I talk in that sense that, you know, that um, I'm going to be,